okay, your system is fail proof. That is, I don't, and I never say, that's not something I would ever say in marketing. And like the fact that I'm sitting here, like, like is kind of a big deal because I hardly ever even do these kinds of calls, but like you were, it's so fail proof and so amazing that if people don't get that, like they need to know that. Hey guys, I'm so excited to present to you someone who is crushing it, apparently not just on TikTok. (laughs) Jamie is an OG of digital marketing. Uh, What what else? Blogging, Facebook groups, going viral. I have pretty much done it all. So, I mean, I've been on the internet since like blogger was a thing. And like, I was one of like the first people on Twitter. Like I have, I have been in Twitter parties, so which is a whole thing that you guys might not even know about. So So I'm so excited that we get to dive on into that. We're going to geek out a little bit today. As you guys know, I've been in the online marketing world only five years, and I'm honestly honored that Jamie is a part of the TikTok Academy, but she really took TikTok and made it her own. Uh, Okay, I want to make sure I get the stats right because it's easy to exaggerate as a marketer. I know, right? How fast? Okay, so I have built with the TikTok Academy, literally by taking what you say, I have a one account that has 700,000, one account that has 145,000 followers, and we just started last week a new one, and we're at 26,000 followers. Oh my god! That's since the last time we talked, by the way. So there is, okay, your system is fail proof. That is, I don't, and I never say, that's not something I would ever say in marketing. And like the fact that I'm sitting here, like, like is kind of a big deal because I hardly ever even do these kinds of calls, but like you were, it's so fail proof and so amazing that if people don't get that, like they need to know that like it's, and it's, and it's just like really, really, really laid out. And it just makes a lot of sense the way you go like here, 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 like you do each point of what you say and then your account grows. There's no like, well, and then if you vary a little bit here, no, just do exactly what you say and you will have a big TikTok account and there's no way around it. So, okay. So I'm kind of like geeking out that you're saying these things because you've been in online marketing before even online marketing was a term. Right. I've worked with huge (laughs) brands. I've worked with like Chevrolet and Coca-Cola and all that stuff. I actually worked at one point I like was, I managed like the community managers whenever Facebook pages just started for Chevrolet. Like it was so, I remember one time I'm sitting there and these giant big wigs and advertising are sitting there and they like, they didn't even know what a hashtag was at that point. I, I had to teach them what a hashtag was, which was so funny. I'm like, it's like a pound sign and then the word, like, I don't know what else to say. And like, no one would ever call it a pound sign anymore because now they call it a hashtag, but it was, yeah. it was a pound sign when the, and they were like, Oh, like on the phone. And you're like, yeah, like on the phone. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, so, you know, and I've grown Facebook and I've grown Instagram and Instagram and Pinterest. Like I have, you know, millions of followers throughout all of that other stuff. But, you know, the thing about TikTok that I have discovered so far is that the TikTok audience is different than any other audience for a lot of different reasons. But one of my favorite reasons is that they're really, really nice. Um, and they can, I mean, I'm not saying there's no trolls, there are trolls like, and whatever, but the support from the TikTok audience versus like the support you get on an Instagram audience or a Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest is so much different. Like they, I think it's because of like the intimacy of TikTok and the way you're like right in their face and whatever, and that sort of thing. But there's something about it that makes them, that makes them like really, really, really value you as like a creator over other other mediums of social media. So if that makes sense. I love that. And you explained it so well. And I think one of the reasons, like I personally have never clicked with Instagram, it's maybe a culture thing, but also, you know, like there's, there's this beautiful behind the scenes, authentic feel on TikTok that I personally really, really love. Have you experienced that too? What I love. And I mean, you know, I have followers on Instagram and I have Instagram accounts. And what I love about TikTok versus Instagram is that yeah, Instagram was, is so pretty and I love looking at Instagram, but I like Instagram doesn't make me feel good. When yeah. I leave Instagram, I'm not like, wow, my, my like crap is together and life is going well. Uh, and I leave TikTok and I'm like, 
I just had so much fun watching TikToks. I just enjoyed my time doing that. Whereas I leave Instagram and I like look at my house and I'm like, I have to redecorate. Like, <laughs> I literally, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I have too much color in my living room, which is crazy. I love color, but I'll like look yeah. like I have blue couches. And I literally walked into my husband one time after Instagram and I was like, we have to get like more neutral couches because yes. our couches are making other people crazy. He's like, you need to shut up. <laughs> okay. See, I love that you're saying that because I literally say this about after we, I spend time on Instagram, I'm like, we have to paint all the walls white. Right. And Paul's like, why? And I'm like, because and, Instagram. And because Instagram says I need my walls white. <laughs> and the frustrating thing about that is, is like, you don't actually want to live in an all white walled house. Like that's not something that you actually want. And so like, like my walls are tan and we always laugh about the fact that like, and, and, and I'm, and Holly, who's a great close friend of mine. I'm and you guys probably like, you might know her. She's quirky mama on Facebook. She's got like 3 oh, yeah. million fans. Um, and we've written several books together and all sorts of things like that. But she, when she moved from one house to the next, she did go white walls. And then she was like, I hate the white walls. Like, you know, she, cause she was like, <laughs> I want my yellow walls back. But she is, she actually had a yellow house at one point. That one doesn't work guys. Like yellow <laughs> is very rough on video because everything you do, you're very yellow. So <laughs> interesting. interesting. But, I mean, it is, I think that's what's crazy about TikTok though, is it doesn't matter. It like, you know, there are TikTokers, like my daughter goes, my daughter will make a TikTok from her room with her like purple lights on and it will do well. Like it's wow. TikTok is so much different than anything else. And I think Gen Z has really like paved what, the, what TikTok is and who knows if it will change, but they've really said like, this is what we want on a TikTok and this is how we want it to be. And everybody else who's kind of come in has sort of like been like, okay, I understand that this is what TikTok is. I think about it. I think one of the best ways to describe that is the angles. Whereas like, millennials and like me who's like a gen x kind like we always do videos from like you know here and then like they're doing videos from like wait you know their head is like what you know this sort of thing like they literally grew up staring at themselves on facetime so they yeah. know what they look like on video whereas we're like oh my gosh like is my hair you know what i mean so yeah. they don't care that they are at the wrong angle they're just trying to get the great shots and they're are, you know they're trying to get the great funny parts and you know, maybe if they're singing or whatever. So they basically said, look, TikTok is not about beautiful angles. It is not about the, it's about actually what life's about. And, and that's, what's so cool for businesses too, is like people will watch a TikTok of somebody just like creating something like here, I'm packaging an order. And then suddenly people are like, I want you to package my order on TikTok. And like, dude, that's a great way to get a sale, you know? Yes. Okay. So real fast, if you guys haven't been catching this, like pull out your notebook and pen because there were already, there was so much gold in that already. Now, Jamie, you're somebody that gives and gives and gives to other people. And I want like to honestly like promote you in this too, because one of the things that I love about how you built was the purpose behind why you were building. It wasn't just to build another platform because you have millions of followers across other platforms. Do you want to share a little bit of the backstory for the biggest account that you currently have on TikTok? So that's elementally, which is actually a witch talk, which is like we read tarot cards and we do like pendulum readings and things like that. And that account is with my 15 year old daughter. And that account actually exists because quarantine happened and my daughter was supposed to go to summer camp. And, um, everything was about to totally about to happen. She's going to get to go to summer camp at midnight the night before they said to her, "Never mind. There was a COVID outbreak in the first summer camp. We're not willing to risk it in the second session. It was the night before. I didn't know that. That's her bags were packed. Heartbreaking. Oh my I mean, gosh. literally her bags were packed and her yeah. dad was taking her and like all of her stuff was already in the car to go to camp. And we find this out at midnight the night before. And you know, they'd oh. already missed school and everything had already happened. And they had all these plans to like be safe at camp and they were going to test them on the way in and all this other stuff. Well, apparently none of that worked. Oh. And so, and I mean, and so like, it was really, really frustrating and she was broken and she had really, really, really handled everything up in quarantine up like well up to that point. And so I was like, what can I do? Like as a mom, and I had been thinking about, I had been, I had actually already downloaded your TikTok Academy for like my blog. And I was thinking about how I could use it over there. And I was like, I think I have an idea to start a new TikTok account. And I asked her and we had played with tarot a little bit before and, you know, different things like that, because like, you know, she's a teenager and that stuff's really cool. And so, um, 
so anyway, I was like, what if we start a witch talk account? Like, what if we, what if you and I sit down and we start an account? And she was like, mom, I think that would be awesome. And then suddenly my kid who was like depressed was super into it. And she was so <laughs> happy and having so much fun. Amazing. And I mean, that's the whole reason that we started it. And like, I mean, I'm like going to cry a little bit because it was kind of a, like emotional thing, but that's the whole why was like to make my kid just be out of her funk. And I was in a funk too. Like, it, and like the funny thing is, is that it's gotten me it's kind of given me something to do that's not necessarily like going out into the world right now while everything's happening, you know? And so I actually didn't realize that we were, that, we, that I was in a funk too, but I got so involved in like the back end of it. And like, I mean, there's literally like over here is like a whole set that you can see. Like, I mean, there's like, now there's like witch potion ingredients behind me. Like literally that's, it was so much fun to do with her just because like, you know, I just, I'm so glad that I got to do it, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but that's how we ended up growing elementally. So I love that so much. And I have to say, like, if I had a kid that was in the TikTok age already, I'd be all over it. Like that is amazing. So fun. And now it's her, it's her part-time job. So she does the readings and stuff. We, I like built a Shopify store behind the scenes. Like when it happened and it started blowing up, I was like, Oh my gosh. So then I had to learn Shopify, which was Okay. But kind of scary. Um, and so then I built the Shopify store so she could like do readings and stuff like that behind the scenes. And now literally she's making money off of this TikTok, And like, also it totally paid for like all of this stuff over here. Like it's crazy and nuts. So, so weird. I just had like a mega deja vu moment, which is weird because we haven't talked about that before, but anyways, I digress. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so weird. Maybe I feel like I would have already had this conversation, yeah. but we haven't. And no, I don't think that we have. Interesting. Anyways, so <laughs> one of the things that's really cool is you built up thousands of dollars worth of sales, right? Not that it matters because it wasn't your full-time job in any way. Is So it was actually so much, so many dollars worth of sales that I had to like back it up a little bit yep. because it became, I mean, first off, like, I like, I'm like, we're in, I'm in this business with my daughter. So I can't hand her that amount of money that we, that we have made because like she's 15. And so like, I mean, so I'm like, okay, well, this is your savings account. You can't touch it without asking kind of thing. Like, oh my gosh, you know? And she of course went crazy, like buying clothes and stuff like that, but whatever. But I mean, there was a, there's a huge amount of it that like, yes, like we literally, we hit amounts of, I mean, Like, I don't even know if like, can I, I mean, I guess I can say, but like our first month we made like $8,000 off of this thing. And then the next month was a five figure month. And then, so that was, so the first month was, the first month was like a half a month that we made $8,000 in the next month we doubled that, which, so that was July. And then August we doubled that. And then in September we are on track to triple that. So like that's nuts to me. (laughs) Um, Anyone who's listening to this, it should be crazy. That's crazy. (laughs) Well, and like it was from nothing. And that's something I I really, really, really want to point out. I did not use my other social media accounts to, um, to advertise this TikTok because I'd actually tried that with my blog to advertise my blog TikTok. And I discovered that the people who are on TikTok are not they don't necessarily come from other social media. They don't necessarily come from Facebook as much and they don't, they don't come from Instagram, et cetera. Like TikTok people are really TikTok people and they feel really like if you're not on TikTok, like then you don't get TikTok at all. Yeah. Like, and, and that's the biggest thing that I say to people when they ask me how to build a TikTok, like a lot of people are like, well, you know, of course now that they've seen this, like, how did you build that TikTok? And I'm like, my first suggestion to you is to download TikTok and watch TikTok for a whole month. And don't even think about, don't even consider even starting your TikTok, which I actually think is important. I think a brand new TikTok is huge. If you have a TikTok and you've made two videos on it and it didn't work, you need to delete that TikTok and start over. Like, I mean, if you have a TikTok that's been going for a while, which totally the bomb did, it had been going for a while. So I did not delete that one and I went to, to grow it. But like, I think that those first five videos that TikTok sees of yours are really, really, really important because it's hard in the beginning. I think the first five videos tell TikTok what your account is about. 
And if you haven't figured out what your account's going to be about before you make those five videos, it's hard to convince TikTok that the TikTok algorithm that your account is going to be about something else. Mm -hmm. I also think that I think that if you have an account and you're just watching videos and not creating on it, that you've told TikTok you're a watcher, not a creator on that account. So I think it's really important to create on an account to show TikTok that you are a creator. Um, but that's, I think that's really important. Um, and that the reason is, is that there's something about those accounts that are getting pushed out more than just the person who occasionally makes a video. A creator, I think is someone who makes a video like at least four or five times a week. Like mm -hmm. I think, and that's what I'm starting to see on the different TikToks and the different like levels of TikToks that we've made. I would agree with that 100%. I've also seen too that like TikTok values consistency. Yes. If they know you're going to be consistent, they reward you. And so like you can't just create a ton of content and then disappear for a month and expect that everything's going to be totally fine. While you still can be carried through that time, it's not the same for TikTok. And what's great about that too is like you can draft your TikToks. Yes. So and I t and you know what's funny is like you, we, we see a lot of screenshots of each other's um, like TikTok pages. Anybody I know who is a successful creator has at least at least forty drafts in their drafts folder at any given time. Most of the time they have over a hundred. That is so true. I think I just binged mine. Yeah. The last month I binged, uh, binge posted them. And I was like, wow, these are all working. This is so crazy. Like months. I've done that too. I've just like gone yeah. for it. I think you have to be careful with that though. Cause I think I got myself a little bit banned doing them. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. so that's a whole topic for a whole, yeah. a whole nother day. Yeah. So one question, obviously we are going to link to elementally. Um, but what is the store for elementally in case people it's are like elementally.com. And so, you know, we've been trying to build that and that has the readings, like the tarot readings and all that stuff. And yeah. now I'm starting to build like a principal library with it as well, which is like, you know, like here's a way to like print manifestations and things like that. Trying to keep it because my big thing is, yes, we're doing the readings, but it's really important to me that we figure out passive income, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I know the last time you and I talked, I was like, I don't know what we're going to do. I know what I want to do is passive income. Yes. I know that's important. And so that's what I'm trying to build right now is I'm trying to build like, and digital products are so great for passive income. And like, you know, classes and things like that. And that's something that we're kind of thinking about, but I'm not ready to like go there yet. <laughs> but we are going to, we are looking at printables and things like that, just for the different things that people ask questions about how to use yeah. a pendulum, how to, you know, what your tarot cards mean, things like that. But um, I think that's really, really, really important with TikTok, especially because there is a lot of work to TikTok. So if you can figure out a way that TikTok can make money, that's cool. Like that's really Super neat. Cool. So. I love that so much. So of course we will link to that either mm -hmm. above this video, beneath this video, or at rachelpeterson.com forward slash podcast. Jamie, what else should people know about you having gone on this entire crazy journey? You went from zero to 750,000 in three months? 700,000. 700, so we went from zero to 700,000. Um, let's see, we started July 12th, July, August, September. So I guess it's two months. Yeah. So it took us two months to get there. And then now we're a little, we're a little, and this happens. So people need to know about this. We're mm -hmm. a little stopped right now at 700,000. And the thing is it will jump and yes. take and with TikTok. The crazy thing is, is that you'll sit at, we may sit at 700,000 for the next three weeks and we may jump 80,000 in a day. Yes. You know, the account that I was talking about that has 26,000 that jumped 10,000 in a day. Yes. It just TikTok. That's something. If you, if you have the content on your page, people are going to follow you, but you've got to have the content there because the thing about a TikTok user more than anything is that they're super astute. They go to the page and then they decide if they're going to follow you almost always. I know that people think that people follow from the little plus sign, but a lot of times they don't. If mm -hmm. you have one great TikTok, it's not enough to get people to follow you. Amen. If you want people to follow you, it's got to be that when they click back on that page and it needs to look pretty, like yeah. I'm going to, elementally is probably my favorite looking like and I actually just purged all of my drafts, so I only have one, but like <laughs> it needs to look like, like it needs to be colorful and moving and everything needs yes. to be that way. Um, and I think that's super, super important because they are going to use that. And that's almost more like your Instagram grid. 
Yes. I think that's the only time that things need to look good is in those thumbnails. And you have every opportunity to pick the best thumbnail from your video. It's not like you don't, You're, there's no sound to it. There's no nothing. Just find the best part of that video a yeah. lot. And especially in business, we don't do it because of our, the, the style of content that we do, but the, you have the opportunity to write the big, like you can put a little platform, a little like placard about what it is on there and you can make it look cute. TikTok literally gives you the option for a title on, you know, and, and it's very easy to add a title to your cover. Like if you're in business and you're saying, and if you're doing like five reasons to do whatever, or that sort of thing, you should 100% be using those covers. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense with the content on that particular page, but if you, especially if you're a coach of any kind, you should absolutely be using those covers. It only makes sense. So like, and that's a great way even to make a, an awful looking video to give it that like cohesiveness, which, you know, that Instagram top nine or whatever kind of thing. I love that so much. Jamie, besides elementally, if people want to learn more about you and what you and your daughter are doing together, where can they find more about you? Totally the bomb.com. That's me. <laughs> I've been blogging there since my daughter was born. So I, love that. I actually started blogging. She's 15 now. And I started blogging. She was probably about maybe four, four or five months old. I started doing it because I was scrapbooking before I started blogging. Well, scrapbooking is really messy and you can't do that with babies. So, um, I started blogging and then I started writing and everything like that. And then, um, that's how I ended up becoming a blogger was because scrapbooking was messy. I love that. And that's so real for any mom, like, yeah. you know, tape, glue, scissors. I needed a hobby that was like on my computer because I could like pick it up and actually, no, <laughs> there was no such thing. Like we didn't have laptops when I first started. It was like a PC. I remember I got my first laptop when she was like three. Yeah. And so like that, like that's how long ago I've been doing this is it literally was like, I was typing on a PC. So. Wow. Wow. Jamie, and there were there were no cameras. Wow. There was like no digital camera. So when we started, it was just words and then like graphics we would make and stuff like that. So it was like just your words. So things have really changed, but it's a pretty cool. lot. But what yeah. I love is that you have implemented what you've learned and you didn't just implement it. You implemented it with speed. And so it was like, you yes. made it happen very quickly. You don't waste time. I do not waste time. That is, and I think well, that's the advantage that we have as small businesses versus big businesses. Because yes. I've worked with big businesses. And like I said, literally, I'm sitting in a room with like 12 big wigs of advertising explaining what a hashtag is so that I can use one. Yeah. Like, and as a small business, that's not a problem. I don't ever have to explain to anyone why I'm using a hashtag. I would just use it. And so that's the big difference is like, I, I'm all about like throw all the spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. And I think that TikTok really, really, really plays well into that. I love that so much. Jamie, thank you so much for joining me today. This has been awesome. And thank you, you guys, for hanging out with us for a little bit. This was fun geeking out. And I have a feeling once the camera goes off, we're going to geek out even further. So Probably. thank you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.